chapter 5, enzymes. We are first going to take a look at the functions of enzymes. And remember, if you remember back to our, uh, to our previous chapter, enzymes are just proteins. Alrighty, so don't get all scared, the big new term. So enzymes are biological catalysts. Now a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction and is not changed by that reaction. This is an important definition to realize. Do understand it and memorize it and uh, understand that a catalyst cannot change and that it speeds up chemical reactions. Alrighty, so chemical reactions take place all the time in your body. And this is a term metabolism, something that we've been talking about now for a couple months. Almost every me metabolic reaction is controlled by catalysts called enzymes. Now remember, enzymes are just proteins. Catalysts are enzymes that are uh, there to speed up a chemical reaction. So they're almost there to speed up your metabolism, to make it go just a little bit faster. Now catalysts speed up the rate of chemical reactions in living things. And as I mentioned before, enzymes are proteins. They provide a way for speeding up life's essential reactions without raising the temperature of an organism's body. So you have to remember that temperature of your body needs to stay on average about 98.7 uh, degrees or 98.3, whatever. It's, it's ranges between there. That's an average. Some people run a little bit hotter. Some people run a little bit cooler. But just remember that um, everybody has this average temperature. We don't really want to raise the temperature too much because if that happens, then you're going to get a fever. We don't want to go below our average too much because that will not be very good for our body anyway. Without enzymes, chemical reactions would not occur fast enough to sustain life. So because you have tons of chemical reactions going on, you do need these catalysts and these enzymes to speed up those reactions so we can uh, sustain the life that we have. Now let's kind of switch gears real quick and just talk about a term called activation energy. Now activation energy is the energy that's required to start a reaction. Now all chemical reactions need a little push to get started. It's kind of like you getting up in the morning. Chances are you need an alarm clock or maybe um, a parent, a brother, a sister, somebody kind of give you that push to get up out of the bed in the morning to go to school. Now reactions will occur faster if the activation energy needed is decreased. So activation energy is that energy required to start. Now what enzymes do is actually lower that activation energy. So enzymes don't really make reactions happen faster. What they do is lower the activation energy, which, which allows the chemical reaction to take place faster. So if you take a look at these two pictures, we have the left without an enzyme. Notice all these little rocks that are barring the frogs from jumping over. Now they can jump over, but that's gonna take them a lot more energy. If we took off the rocks, then these frogs can jump over without much effort. And this is what enzymes do. They lower that activation energy. So a lot of energy doesn't really need to get started or n need to be used to get that reaction started. So here are some examples of enzymes. Now we talked a lot about starch in the last chapter. Starch is digested to the sugar maltose by the enzyme amylase. This is a very specific enzyme for starch. Proteins are digested to amino acids by the enzyme protease. And something called a catalase works inside the cells of living organisms in both animals and plant cells. Now, um, an example would be your liver or perhaps potato cells. Now, catalase breaks down hydrogen peroxide in your body to water and oxygen. Hydrogen peroxide is actually very toxic to the body. Without catalase, that hydrogen peroxide would stick around. But with catalase, 
hydrogen peroxide gets broken down into water and oxygen. So here's the example that I just gave about hydrogen peroxide breaking down into water and, and oxygen. Now what happens is you have this hydrogen peroxide here. You're going to have your catalyst being catalase here breaking things down into water and oxygen. Now you've probably seen if you put hydrogen peroxide on a cut or on something, it foams. Well that is actually the escaping oxygen. So hydrogen peroxide is something that needs to be broken down into the, in the body into water and oxygen. Now enzymes are also used in seed germination. So here we have a picture of a seed and I believe this is something that you should draw in your notes. So go ahead and do that as you hear me talk or pause the video. Now as seeds soak up water, amylase is activated which breaks down the starch into maltose. Maltose is transported to the embryo to provide energy for growth. So what we see here in this picture, we have starch being broken down into maltose by amylase. Amylase is actually secreted here. Now this maltose gets absorbed by the embryo and the embryo can then grow. So it's very important to understand how enzymes are used in seed germination. Starch gets broken down into maltose by amylase. It gets absorbed by the embryo and the embryo can then grow. Now enzymes are given special names as well. Enzymes are named according to the type of chemical reaction that they catalyze. So, for example, if they catalyze carbohydrates, then they become carbohydrases. If they catalyze proteins, those enzymes are called proteases. If they catalyze lipids, they're called lipases. Do you see a pattern here? ASE is added to the ends of names in order to designate that that is the enzyme that's attached to it. So we can actually be more specific with some names like when the uh, the enzyme that breaks down starch is called amylase. The enzyme that breaks down maltose is called maltase. And the one that breaks down sucrose is called sucrase. Now what do you think or what enzyme do you think breaks down lactose? Kind of take a look here at the pattern and just jot down your answer in the notes. Now, if you come to me tomorrow in class, now this has to be either on w uh, Tuesday in class or Wednesday in class, and you tell me the enzyme that breaks down lactose, then I will give you an extra couple points on whatever you want me to, some extra credit. Now don't tell anybody because that's not fair that you had to watch the video and they did not. So keep that in mind when you come to me tomorrow or Wednesday. Now enzymes change substrates to products. Now this is where uh, now we're getting into the process of enzymes and how they actually change things into uh, making them go faster. So the part of an enzyme where the reaction occurs is known as the active site. And in this picture, that's the white part here. The enzyme in this picture is going to be blue. So the molecule that the enzyme acts on is known as the substrate. Now your active site again is still white, your enzyme is still blue, but our substrate molecules, these are the ones that the enzyme acts on. So your enzyme acts on a substrate. Now the molecule the enzyme produces is known as the product. So we have here, we have the white part being the active site, the blue part being your enzyme. You have your substrate being, I believe, it's those, oh, it's the white ones. And then in here, your red ones. 
Some of these should be actually colored in and they are not. But your product, just remember, is the molecule that is kind of like the end product of this reaction. Now the enzyme is not altered or changed during this process, so it actually can repeat it over and over again. So this blue, sti this blue thing right here, your enzyme, does not change. It's just the same shape as it was when it began. So it's going to be reused over and over. Now each enzyme is specific to one substrate molecule or type of molecule. Think of it as a lock and key. One key opens one lock. So an enzyme is the lock. The substrate is the key. So here we go again. We kind of have it broken down a little bit for you. Our enzyme in this case is going to be orange. Our active site, now this is the white part. This is sort of where your substrate is going to attach to. So your enzyme is the lock. Your substrate's the key. It's going to come in and attach itself to the active site. Now the active site specifically matches the shape of the substrate molecule. Just like if you were to try to take any key and put it into any lock, it doesn't really fit. So the lock and key method, your enzyme is the key. I'm sorry, your enzyme is the lock. Your substrate's the key. Now this lock and key model is also known as the enzyme substrate complex. So it's the same thing, just with a different name. Your substrate will fit directly into your active site and your enzyme will work on that substrate to create a product. Same thing. Now here we go. We have just one more slide, I think. <laughs> and this, again, shows you a different version of that lock and key model or the enzyme substrate complex. So in this case, we have our blue thing right here. This is our enzyme. Our orange is the substrate. This is what we're trying to change right here. Our active site are those little notches on your enzyme. When they come together, they're going to fit perfectly, just like a lock and key. And then what's going to happen is that now they're going to split apart. We have our end products here, and our enzyme stays the same. So in this case, the only thing that's changing really is that substrate. That's what's getting broken down into its products. One last picture. And this is just an example of sucrose changing into glucose and fructose. So here we have this big enzyme with our active site. Kind of looks like the infinity symbol. So your enzyme and your substrate are available. Now your substrate is going to come in. Boop, doo doop, doo doop. This is your sucrose. It's going to bind to the enzyme right on the active site. The active site and that enzyme is going to change your, subst your substrate, in this case sucrose, into its two products, glucose and fructose. And these guys are released, and then that enzyme can then be used again. So you're going to have another sucrose come, fit in, break apart, and boom, it's a big cycle.